people who are on death row are usually put to death, either by fatal injection, hanging, or some other method. This is because the death penalty is only given for the worst crimes. But there have been times when people seem to have cheated death and somehow lived through execution. So what do you do when this happens? People who were on death row and then got out of jail have amazing stories that we'll show you in this movie. First, let's talk about John Babacomley, an Englishman who may be the most famous person who survived an attempt on his life. John came into the world in 1864 in Abbotskirswell, Devon. One of his bosses, Emma Keyes, was said to have killed her at home with a knife on November 15, 1884. Aside from the fact that he had a very strange cut on his arm and a long history of theft crimes, there wasn't much evidence that he had anything to do with Emma's death. That being said, none of this was really important to the case. But then, this was the late 1800s, a time when many of the legal concepts we use today were not as clear. The court thought there was enough evidence to convict John Lee of Emma Keyes's murder, even though he said he wasn't guilty and that most of the evidence was against him. He was given the death penalty. He was supposed to be hanged on February 23, 1885. But until then, he was going to be held at the notorious Exeter prison. But things went in a strange direction when it was time to put him to death. The hatch on the platform that John Lee was standing on wouldn't open. Even though the hatch had been tried and worked perfectly before, this seemed a little off. John was put back on the platform after another round of tests, but the hatch still wouldn't open. They tried to kill him a third time, but failed. At this point, the medical officer in charge of the execution refused to go ahead with the plan, and the attempt to kill the person stopped. There was a lot of talk in the public and at the home office about how strange it was that John Lee's execution attempt failed. That time, Sir William Harcourt was the home secretary. He wanted to know what had gone wrong, so he ordered an investigation to start right away. Following this, he changed John Lee's sentence from death to life in prison. When the investigation's findings were made public, it was found that the drawbar on the gallows had been damaged when it was moved from the old hospital to the coach house. As a result, the trapdoor's hinges were prevented from dropping. Lee had actually avoided death because of a small problem with the way things were lined up. But even a shorter term wasn't enough for John Lee. He kept asking the Home Office for help until he was finally freed in 1907, after 22 years in jail. He not only didn't finish his first death sentence, he also got out of his more reduced term. The man they couldn't hang was his nickname because he was so famous across the country. He even made money off of the attention the event brought him after he got out of jail. He wrote a book and had a silent movie made about him. He finally moved to the United States, changed his name to James Lee, and lived there until 1945. Before John Lee's failed execution, more than 200 years ago, there was another English person who had survived being put to death. Anne Green was her name. The judge, Sir Thomas Reed, lived in Dunstan, Oxfordshire, and she worked as a scullery maid in his home. She lived a normal life as a maid in the 1600s until Sir Reed's grandson, Geoffrey Reed, approached her and wooed her. Even though Geoffrey was only 16 or 17 years old at the time, he was able to impress Anne, who was 22 years old. Because of what they did, she got pregnant. But she didn't seem to know she was pregnant and went on with her life as usual. That is, she didn't know she was pregnant until she lost the baby. It had been 17 weeks since the last visit. She chose to hide all signs of the affair because she was afraid of what would happen to her if it got out. She quickly learned that didn't work out so well for her. Anne was charged with killing a baby by Sir Reed. He went after her because of the Concealment of Birth of Bastards Act, which said that a woman who hid the death of her unborn child was guilty of murder. Even though she said she wasn't guilty, her word and the midwife's word that the fetus was too young and not fully developed to be officially called a living child were not enough. The 14th of December, 1650, she was given the death penalty for killing child. Anne Green was put to death by hanging. In fact, 
Even while she hung, a soldier hit her repeatedly with the butt of his gun, thinking that she was dead. She was finally brought down, and her body was given to the University of Oxford so that they could do more study on it. The Oxford doctors William Petty and Thomas Willis found out that the supposed dead body they had been given was still alive when they brought her in. Even though she was very weak and her vital signs were very low, she wasn't dead yet. The doctors moved quickly and tried many different treatments to save her life. It looked like their hard work paid off because Anne quickly got better and was back to a mostly normal health. Anne Green quickly became the talk of the town after word spread that she was getting better. The police let her go when they found out what had happened because they thought she was innocent and God had saved her. She lived for nine more years before she died in 1659. John Kenneth Eugene Smith. We go from England in the 1600s to Alabama in the 2000s. An arrest was made for Kenneth Smith, who was found guilty of killing a woman in 1988 and given the death penalty. But unlike the other cases, Kenneth's killing would take a long time. These days, most killings ordered by the state don't happen right away, and many people on death row spend a long time before they are put to death. As of 2019, the Bureau of Justice Statistics found that people on death row spend an average of 264 months, or 22 years, there before they are executed, if they are killed at all. He would spend the next 33 years of his life locked up at the Holman Correctional Facility in Atmore, South Alabama, even though he was on death row. His death order was finally signed, and it was time for him to be put to death by lethal injection. Ken had accepted that he was going to die while he was in jail. He took it in stride when he was told he was going to be put to death. Kenneth did everything that had to be done on November 17th, 2022, the day he was put to death. Everything went wrong when he was finally strapped to the chair. As of 8.02 p.m., the 11th Circuit Appeals Court put a hold on his execution. He was still strapped to the bed, but the process had not yet begun. But the prison officers didn't follow it. They kept going with the process. A mix of midazolam hydrochloride, rocuronium bromide, and potassium chloride was meant to be used to kill Kenneth. In most cases, these drugs will be given through an IV infection. They would quickly and easily turn it off once they were inside his body. In fact, this quick way of killing someone is exactly why lethal injection has become more popular as the best way to kill someone in the US. Kenneth's try, on the other hand, was anything but quick and easy. The people who were meant to give him the drugs tried to find a vein by poking and prodding him, but they couldn't. The team finally decided that they could not do the process properly after four hours of tries including one in which they stabbed him in the neck. The procedure was then canceled. Then what did Kenneth do after that? He was weak, dizzy, and hyperventilating so much that he couldn't walk without help. It was up to the state to decide what to do with him after he was taken back to his cell. In a shocking turn of events, Alabama Governor Kay Ivey decided to temporarily halt the death sentence so that the state could look into a number of lethal shots. Not only Kenneth had tried to be executed, but failed, but so had many others. Today, he is still living, and it is not known if he will be put to death again, or if his sentence will be changed. The German name is Joseph Samuel. Another famous person who made it off of death row is Joseph Samuel. Joseph was born in 1780 and was a renowned thief. He was caught and sent to the British convict settlement at Sydney Cove to be locked up. But Joseph was able to get out of jail because it wasn't strong enough to hold him. He joined a gang after he got away. His group robbed a house one day and killed a police officer who was there called Joseph Luca. Anywhere, killing a police officer has always been a very bad crime and the group was quickly found and caught. A witness quickly named Joseph as the thief but not as the person who killed Mr. Luca. The court didn't buy his case, and he was found guilty and given the death penalty based on the principle of vicarious responsibility, which says that a person is responsible for both the crime they set out to commit and any other crime they caused. In a strange twist, 
The other gang members were found not guilty because there wasn't enough proof against them. After being arrested on September 26, 1803, Joseph was taken to Parramatta to be hanged in public. A common way to kill people at the time was to hang them slowly and strangle them. It was a noose made of five cotton cords that was tied together at one end. Joseph Samuel was hung from the noose. Usually prisoners would be dead within a few minutes of being put to death. But as Joseph was being put to death, the rope broke and he fell to his knees. He may have only hurt himself badly enough to sprain his ankle by this. At this point, both the person carrying out the killing and the people watching were shocked by what they saw. Along with Joseph, another prisoner had been killed. He was almost dead, but Joseph was still living. The executioner quickly added another rope to the gallows, tightened the loop around Joseph's neck, and tried to kill him again. In the end, Joseph died in jail in April 1806. Romeo Broom. Romel Broom is the guy on this list who definitely didn't get what he earned. Romel was born on June 4, 1956, in Muskegon, Michigan. He has always been interested in crime, even when he was very young. Even when he was a youth, Romel did so many bad things that he had to stay at the Ohio Youth Commission to get better. No matter how hard people tried to help him change, he kept breaking the law as soon as he got out. He seemed to be very good at stealing things and raping people, especially little girls. He was caught and admitted to several counts of rape and armed robbery. He got between 7 and 25 years in jail. He was let out on parole on May 11, 1984, after less than 10 years in jail. That was a bad idea. On September 21, 1984, he kidnapped, raped, and killed 14-year-old Trina Middleton while she was walking home from a football game with two friends. This was the first murder on his list of crimes. Two and a half months later, on December the 6th, 1984, Rommel Broom tried to kidnap Melinda Grissom, who was 11 years old. Melinda's mother held onto the car while she screamed for help because she was scared her daughter would die. This not only saved her daughter's life, but it also helped catch Broom because two men who saw the whole thing wrote down the license plate of the car. In the evening that same day, this helped the cops find and arrest Romel Broom. It was said that he killed, raped, kidnapped, and tried to kidnap someone. In the end, the killing had to be put on hold. The event got a lot of attention, and Romel Broom's lawyers tried to use this to get his sentence reduced. But in the end, the Ohio Supreme Court said that the state would carry out the execution. On December 28, 2020, he died at Franklin Medical Center in Columbus, Ohio, from what were likely COVID-19 consequences. John Smith. John Smith was born in 1661 and was a renowned London whore. But John didn't always deal in crime. As a young man, he worked a few jobs before joining the Royal Navy. He served until the Battle of Vigo Bay in 1702, when he was released. After that, he became a soldier. This is where he began working as a housebreaker. John was smart, but not smart enough to stay out of trouble. He was finally caught and put on trial for his crimes. He was found guilty and given the death penalty. Today, the act would be seen as much worse than the sentence, but the court thought it was fair at the time. John was going to be killed by hanging. His death date came and went, and the noose was put around his neck. He was then slowly strangled. But as time went on, it became clear that even though he was in a lot of pain, he wasn't close to dying. Finally, people began to pull on his feet, hoping to put enough pressure on the knot to kill him, so that he would not have to suffer any longer. This didn't work. So the crowd quickly started begging for him to be let go. Because of all the noise, John was finally freed after about 15 minutes of swinging and taken right away to get medical help. He fully got better. After a few months, he was set free. He was called Half-Hanged Smith after that. You would be wrong to think that this is the end of John Smith's story. Soon after, Smith continued breaking into people's homes but he was able to escape jail time and the death penalty several times. 
While he was being tried at the Old Bailey, he was arrested and the jurors left the decision to 12 judges because the case was too complicated. They let him go again. He was put in jail, but the prosecutor died the day before the trial that would have almost definitely led to his death. So he was freed again. A padlock was stolen by John, who was 66 years old, on May 17, 1727. Eight picklock keys were also found on him when he was searched more. The proof gathered was enough to show that he planned to break into the building where he was found, and he was found guilty of theft. He was given a sentence of being sent to Virginia. He was taken to Virginia, but nothing is known about what happened to him after that. He probably lived there for the rest of his life, hopefully not breaking into houses anymore. William Duell. William Duell was only 17 years old when he was found guilty and given the death penalty. A woman named Sarah Griffin was raped in London on November 24, 1740 with his help. He was hung. He and four other people were left to hang for 20 minutes. Everyone thought he was dead by the time he was finally killed. There was no reason to think anything else, because that was the norm at the time. His body and the bodies of the other people who were put to death with him were given to the anatomy theater at the worshipful company of barbers and surgeons. The goal was to be able to cut up the bodies and use them for medical training and study. There was nothing strange about this. However, something strange did happen to him before he could be cut up. One of the maids saw that William Duell was breathing while he was getting ready to be worked on. Even though his breath was weak, it was clear that he was still living. His breathing got faster and faster as time went on. Because they couldn't do what they had planned, they had to change their plans to save his life. He got medical help, and he quickly began to feel better. After only two hours, he was even able to sit up. It turned out that he had no memory at all of being hung when he was finally conscious enough to talk. This was because he had a high fever during his hearing and death. He may have been mentally sick as well because of the heat. Scientists thought that this might have been what saved his life, but there was no real proof of that. The question of what to do with William came up now that he was living and seemed to be getting better. Since the doctors didn't know what to do, they called the police, who picked him up and sent him back to jail until someone decided what to do with him. Mr. Willie Francis. The case of Willie Francis is one on this list that seems to have a lot of disagreement about whether or not they should have been held guilty in the first place. Willie was found guilty even though he was still a child, which in the 20th century caused some confusion. Many people have thought that his guilt was based on race. Willie was black. What happened? It all began with the death of a guy named Andrew Thomas. Willie Francis used to work for Mr. Thomas, who owned a store in St. Martinville. The cops didn't have any tips on the case for the first few months after he died. In August 1945 though, nine months after Andrew Thomas's death, Willie was caught for a crime that had nothing to do with the murder. The cops said that he had Andrew Thomas's wallet on him while they were investigating him. So they began questioning him about the murder of Mr. Thomas. Willie told the cops that he killed the person but there wasn't any other strong proof against him, and some people say that he was forced to confess. Not only did Mr. Thomas's wallet, but also the murder weapon, which belonged to a deputy in St. Martinville who had threatened to kill Andrew Thomas, and even the body of the victim suddenly vanished. No matter what, Willie Francis was put on trial. His lawyers, who were hired by the government, didn't say anything bad, question anything, or even defend him, he was found guilty and given the electric chair death sentence. He did the crime when he was 15 years old and was 16 years old when he got his term. On May 3rd, 1946, Willie Francis was supposed to be electrified. However, he lived through the charge, even though it hurt a lot. It turned out that the jail guard who set up the electric chair did it wrong because he or she was drunk. After the execution went wrong, a lawyer named Bertrand de Blanc chose to take Willie's case to the Supreme Court and make an appeal. If you thought this video was interesting, click this one right now to learn even more about the strangest things about our world.